he joined, but I don't know that he joined. <laughs> there you are. Hello. Yay! Technology. Hello. How are we doing? How was you? Wow. Sorry. <laughs> that that uh, it, it always is a little bit choppy when we first start these interviews because everyone's just getting used to this platform. But thank you so much for joining us. I really, really appreciate it. It must be late in Scotland. So thank you for taking the time to sit down with us. My, my pleasure. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Fantastic. Okay, so you guys won a big, 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 glorious medal. Best of show, best of class, best whiskey. Tell, tell me, how does that feel to win one of your, one of the most prestigious medals and awards in all of the spirits industry? Oh, I mean, oh, what can I say? It, it really doesn't get any bigger than this, does it? You know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's awesome. It's, you know, it's totally out of the blue. It's, um, it's just absolutely fantastic for, for the team, for Glen Scotia, for Campbelltown. It's, it's, it's wonderful. It's, you know, for me personally, it's wonderful recognition for the distillery, you know, how far it's, it's, it's come in the last uh, 67 years, six to seven years, you know, it's, it's been, it's been unbelievable. It really has, you know, and, and, you know, I, I honestly can't thank the, the, obviously the, the world spirits competition, the judges, it's, it still hasn't sunk in really with us yet. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. How, have you seen kind of an increase in exposure, an increase in sales? I know a lot of people are asking us, where can we get the bottle? And, and we are having trouble ourselves trying to get a hold of it. I, I personally have a bottle um, just because we had some left from our tasting, but uh, I'm not going to tell anyone where it is because I will probably get taken in the middle of the night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, here's another one. <laughs> oh, and a nice box too. Look at that! Look, wonderful. Gorgeous. That's Gorgeous. It. Um, yeah, it, it's it's um, it's obviously the, the demand is is obviously um, I think the best way to describe it is went through the roof. <laughs> um, everybody seems to want a bottle. Older Glen Scotia's now seem to be uh, much in demand. Um, so it's. Uh, it's 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 fantastic. It really is. You know, in Campbelltown whiskey in general, uh, whether it's Glen Scotia or, or you know, in Springbank or whatever, you know, seems to obviously be much in demand. So this is obviously just you know made that that process of acquiring um, older whiskies, uh, specifically the Glen Scotia twenty five year old. Um, difficult, but as I say, we, we'll keep we'll keep doing what we can do. We will keep the 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 stocks going but the there may be a lull at some point but um yeah we can only do what we can do with it as i say that the you know the 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 bottlings that's available are are um slightly rarer than your average core range so. mm -hmm. and how does it uh impact your product that is located in campbelltown like the nature of the of the um topography and um, what what makes Campbelltown different for a distillery than the rest of the regions? Well, obviously Campbelltown, the region, you know, it's 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 a unique place. You know, obviously the the history of Campbelltown is second to none. It's obviously the you know it is the whiskiest place in the world. Uh, it's a small town. Um, I don't know whether you've ever been or not, but if you've not, you need I'm, to. I'm ready to come. <laughs> but you need to come to Campbelltown. Uh, it, you know, it's it's got that uniqueness, you know, and there's nowhere quite like it. It's steeped in whiskey. Um, it, it's, you know, it's it's got that pedigree. Um, you know, as I say, there were up to 27 plus distilleries in a small town with a maximum population of 9,000 people. So it shows you how important whiskey was um, to this small town. So th this is led on to the present day with Glen Scotia, Springbank, uh, Kilkern. Um, they, they're the flag bearers, if you like. So, you know, they're obviously carrying that Campbelltown, the subtle robustness, the salinity, the maritime aspect, and that wonderful flavour profile um, through, you know, and it's, 
yeah, it's a unique place. It's got that uniqueness to it. You know, it's always it's always going to be slightly more select, Campbelltown. And what what's just for a layman? What is your process for distilling your Glen Scotia twenty five? Just just a, a broad strokes. I know it's a very complicated process, but just for for people that don't know how to make an amazing scotch just tell us how how what goes into making the glen scotia 25 well when you consider the process at uh, glen scotia you know it's obviously it's a small distillery it's been in the same site since 1832 um it's classic double pot still distillation so obviously we're working with uh, pre-malted barley we bring that in we'll grind it to a specific grist um, the mash tun we've got is a, a rack and pinion type mash tun, so there's not many of these left in the industry. I'm hazardous, hazardous, and uh, I guess they'll say there'd be about four left in the industry, uh, so it's very difficult to work. Uh, and that's obviously where the team comes in. You know, that team day in, day out, they're following that same process, so they're obviously strapped in that, uh, and it's slightly cloudy, the wort, yeah, that cloudy wort. Uh, we've got uh, small charges in the wash box, so the fermenters, uh, and obviously the fermentation time, quite a long fermentation time. We've got an average of about 128.8 as average fermentation time, hours at Glen Scotia. So we're, we've obviously, we're starting off with that Campbelltown DNA, that the wash is going to be 7-8%. Um, we're generating that wonderful flavour profile through secondary fermentation. And the distillation, again, is so hands-on. It's all done by the guys. They're obviously operating the stills with steam valves. Uh, and there's nothing, there's no instruction manual. There's nothing to, you know, to tell you. Oh, we've lost So um, it's it's classic, classic uh, Campbelltown production methods uh, and obviously coupled with that wonderful bourbon casks there. So, so yeah, works very, very well. And how does age impact the, the taste and the quality of your product? Age, age is obviously... Um, Age, age has got a huge significance. Obviously, the you know, depending on how a specific product was made and the type of wood it was put into, um, then, um, you know, there's there's a lot to that process. And it can, there's a lot of variables in there. Um, it, it would be wrong to say that the longer a whiskey matures, the better it is. That simply isn't the case. It's really how it was made in day one. You know, it's how that original, you know, what I, I, I talked about a moment ago, it's how that... Um, you make spirit is put together. You know how's the malted, but where the malted barley come from, how you treat that malted barley, how you grind it, how you mash it, how you ferment it, and how you distill it, and finally uh, how you 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 mature it, the type of wood it goes in, where it's matured. So that's really got a bigger bearing, obviously, in the whiskey uh, than time. Absolutely, time will smooth out any issues you've got to a certain extent probably when you get to about 12 year old such like then you're going to reach that optimum maturation period there so obviously the 25 year old slightly on from that um but yeah it, it fascinating fascinating subject um i got one question from an audience member that asks what do you think sets you apart glen scotia from the other Campbelltown distilleries uh, well, I would say this sets us apart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was, Good answer. I would say, yeah, win winning a gold medal at the Olympics has obviously got a huge, um, <laughs> it's got a huge bearing on it. But no, it, it, seriously, I think, um, I think it's obviously, uh, you know, it's it's we're all Campbelltown. You know, we've all got certain descriptors in there which are Campbelltown, mm -hmm. but it's like any distillery you know within a region that they're all obviously going to be uh, differences in there and there certainly are differences uh, at Glen Scotia um, potentially Glen Scotia's um, you know is 
the best way of describing it is probably slightly less robust than your average Campbelltown whiskey. Um, very much geared up in that flavour profile. And the festival edition is a fantastic example of that. You know, it's it's um, it's got its Campbelltown characteristics there, the robustness, the wonderful flavour uh, profile running through it, the maritime aspects. Yeah, it's so accessible. You know, it's so easy to drink. Um, and the cask finish red wine in that, that case, um, is, you know, is, is, is so easy to obviously appreciate. Um, so, so yeah. I know it's probably hard to pick favourites, but what is your favourite Glen Scotia whiskey? You know, and this, this, is, this is no exaggeration, I don't lie. I always had a soft spot for the 25-year-old, but I, to be fair, I never really drank it that often. Um, and why did I like that? Because it's so because, hard to find. It, well, yes. <laughs> I, I, I'm not that wealthy yet that I can <laughs> Your own product. I'm, I'm, yes. It's, um, but it, it's, it's, and, and how it appealed to me, um, obviously the, the, I tend to drink others in the core range more often, but what I really, really liked about the 25-year-old was the bourbon cask influence. You know, I, I was... From day one at Glen Scotia, it was always the 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 bourbon, the bourbon casks. I filled a bit, spent about nine years filling first fill bourbon casks at Glen Scotia, uh, you know, production levels. So that was always a huge influence in me. Absolutely, I, you know, I can appreciate other finishes, sherry, wine, whatever ports, uh, but I always go back to that bourbon. You know, that bourbon um, influence there is. Is, it does it for me. It does it for Glen Scotia, Campbelltown in general, I think. So, so yeah. Okay, Lovely. so I asked these three questions at the end of every interview. So um, these are on the fly. And I know you're a Scotch man, so cocktails are probably not your thing. But today is World Cocktail Day. What is your favorite cocktail? Oh, you know... I I um I'm not very au fait with um different cocktails. Um and I'll tell you a quick story about cocktails. I we we a few years ago we did the grand tour which was taking Glen Scotia to different parts of the, the world and uh we started off I think we started off in London. Uh it was Gary and myself and a few other guys. And the first time, really, that I really appreciated a, a cocktail was with, I think it was a double cask. Uh, and there was a wonderful guy there by the name of TJ, and he was uh, he was a cocktail master at this event. Uh, and he gave me this cocktail, and obviously I was, mm, right, okay, I'm, I'm a bit of a traditionalist. I don't know really cocktails. <laughs> and I tasted this cocktail, and I was absolutely blown away. I but there were, it was called a Highland Mary, and that's what it was called. Highland Mary, which was named after Robert Burns's girlfriend, who, Robert Burns, a poet, a famous poet, whose girlfriend stayed in Campbelltown, just across from Glen Scotia, believe it or not. Um, so he made this cocktail, and obviously it's not one of the, the, the well-known cocktails, and... Um, you know, that it's it's obviously something he made up himself. But I was absolutely blown away. It was absolutely wonderful. And I drank it all weekend and I thought this is this is this is awesome. This is absolutely awesome. So Okay, we're gonna have to get that recipe and put it on our website. I might have it. I'll actually have a look at that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well Gary is saying that it's double cask, honey, and sherry. Sounds good. All right. Okay. Okay. There you go. Well, wow. Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay. I, absolutely. Yes. Yes. There you go. Next question La is, uh, what is your favorite song to listen to while either drinking Glen Scotia or making Glen Scotia? Oh, my favorite song. Well, I'm, I'm, and I'm going to give my age away here. I'm a, I'm a bit of a, um, I'm a bit of a rock fan. You know, I like, um, uh, well, I like Journey. Um, you know, big big Journey fan. I always liked Journey. Uh, thought they were um, awesome. Grew up with them. So, um, yeah, Journey's probably one of the the you know my favourite bands. And as I say, if I'm sitting, 
uh, enjoying a dram, uh, company of my dear wife, then sometimes she, um, she's she got to suffer journey and <laughs> I, put, I put journey on and um, yeah, yeah. That's, Amazing. That's, that's, yeah, yeah. Okay, last question is what would be, if you had to have your last meal with a dram of Glen Scotia, what would it be to pair with Glen Scotia? Uh, <coughs> well, my last meal, my last meal ever. Um, oh my goodness. You gotta raise the stakes, they gotta be high. They've got to be high. Um, I, I mean, absolutely, you know, I could pick, um, Luckily enough, I could p potentially pick a single cask out the warehouse and and really go out in the high, you know, pick something that's something that's unique and something that's um, uh, you know, something that's it's obviously incredibly rare. But you know, I, me personally, again, you know, I would come back to that twenty-five-year-old. You know, my love of that bourbon uh, finish is it's. And what meal would you pair it with? Oh, what meal! I think it would need to be. It would be some kind of seafood. I think for me, you know, it would probably, um, you know, it could be something, something quite n nothing too fancy. Just you know, sometimes I quite like, um, you know, quite basic. It would be something potentially herring, potty, potty herring, which is a what we call a roll mop herring here. So potentially something like that. You know, something quite simple. You know, a herring with salad. And it's I love Scottish. It does. Aye, aye. Not, nothing too, as I say, nothing too fancy. And I think that would, be, that would work very well with the, the, the drum, you know, the 25-year-olds. So. But yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much for taking the time today to talk with us. And congratulations on your major achievement. And uh, we will look up that cocktail recipe to put on our website. Absolutely. Absolutely. And thank you very much for having me. And thank you, everyone. Obviously, obviously made the 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 25 year old uh, possible as i say you know as i say we're, we're completely blown away it's a small town small distillery small company even 